Hi, this is Mr. Ferguson from East Millbrook Middle School, 8th grade science again. Uh, we're going to look today at how to read the periodic table to find out the subatomic particles. The protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. Now, the table itself is pretty universal. Our symbols are the same the world over, um, but when you first look at it, it doesn't look like each box has a whole lot of information in it. So, we're going to take a look today at what goes where. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to know, make sure that we're clear on some of our terms, is that the atomic number, that's the most important thing that we need to know about any one particular element, and that is the number of protons. The atomic mass, I say mass because it's the long one that has all of the decimal place on it, is the average number of protons plus neutrons. Now, not to be confused with the mass number. The mass number is the number of, again, protons plus neutrons, but this time only of one particular isotope of the atom. Any one all by itself atom, its mass number is protons plus neutrons. Now, what does that show us then? Let's take a look. This is a box that we would find in the periodic table for oxygen. The number at the top is always the atomic number. That's how many protons we have. Down here we have the atomic symbol. Now, in this case, remember, uppercase and lowercase makes a very big difference. Below it we're going to have the name, and at the bottom, because there's all the decimals, this is the atomic mass. That's what we're given, but what we can find from this is a lot more information. So, for instance, if we take the mass and we round it to the nearest whole number. Now, 15.9, we don't really care about the extra nines. So, if we're going to round to the nearest whole number, that would be 16. Because this is all the different isotopes, taken in for the average. The nearest whole number is the most common variety. So that's going to be the most common mass number. That's protons plus neutrons. So let's take a look from our worksheet the first one we're dealing with oxygen again. We see in the box the one thing that's missing is the name. Now from here, let's take a look. The atomic number we're always going to find up top. So we're just going to bring that down. The atomic mass is the one that has all of the decimals. We'll bring it down also, 15.999. Now, the mass number, we want that to be rounded from the nearest whole number. So 15.9, again, we don't care about the extra nines, that rounds to 16. We found that by rounding. Now, from here, we're going to be able to figure out the protons, neutrons, and electrons given these numbers. The first one's pretty simple. The atomic number, by its definition, is the number of protons. And the mass number, since that is protons plus neutrons, what we need to do is say, here's a complicated math, if 16, that was our protons plus the number of neutrons, we already know that protons was 8. So 16 is 8 plus what number? Well, in this case, pretty simple, that's another 8. The periodic table of elements is always going to represent the atom in its neutral state, meaning it doesn't have a plus or a minus charge. Remember, the pluses come from the protons. So, in its neutral state, the number of protons always equals the number of electrons. So if we have eight protons, I'm going to use blue again because again, I'm just going to bring it down. That means oxygen has to also have eight electrons. 
All right, let's take a look at our next example. Our next example, number 30 on the periodic table. What we're missing is zinc, capital Z, lowercase n. Notice lowercase, not just a capital N made smaller. It makes a difference. We're going to start again. We take our atomic number that is straight from the top. We're going to slip around here and make our life a little bit easier. Since we already know the atomic number, we already know that that's the number of protons. And since it's a neutral atom, we already know that has to be the same as the number of electrons. So right away, that number gives us three things to fill in. The atomic mass, we need all the decimals, 65.39. When we round that to its nearest whole number, we don't care about the 9, 65, that 0.3 says stay the same, so that is 65. Now to find my neutrons, this mass number is protons plus neutrons. We already know that 65, 30 of those are the protons. All I really need to do is subtract. 30, I need another 35 to make the mass number 65. So protons equal to electrons. The protons plus neutrons equals the mass number that we got by rounding. One more example. Element number three. What we're missing in this box was its name. And let's bring it straight down. We know it's element number three, so that's the atomic number, which has to be the number of protons. And since it's balanced and neutral, it must equal the number of electrons. The atomic mass, we need all the decimals, 6.941. We round that to the nearest whole number of seven. That's protons plus neutrons. We already know that three of those are protons, so seven is three plus four. That's all it takes. The little bit of information they give us in the box, these two numbers all by themselves will be able to figure out how many protons, how many neutrons, and how many electrons in the neutral atom.